Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just gonna do a quick video here on speed regulation, um, just to give us a little understanding, help us through this. So when they're discussing speed regulation is when they're talking about what happens to my motor um, in two states. I wanna know, and we're gonna describe this as a percentage. So what I'm trying to figure out is the speed of my rotor. So what they will do is they will use an N and that represents speed. So there's lots of this. We can talk about slip speed. We can talk about um, no load speed, full load speed, synchronous speed. So that subscript will be an N. This is just the speed of whatever I'm describing. So when they're talking speed regulation, what they are referring to is the rotor. I want to know what the rotor is doing between no load speed and full load speed and express that as a percentage. So I can describe this as a formula and that is the pers percent n, percent speed, and a little subscript I like to use is reg, so regulation. So percent speed reg is the speed of my motor at no load divided by the speed of my motor at full load minus one. And then if you want to express this as a percentage, we will times that by 100. A lot of the times I just remove this times 100 and I move the decimal place in my head, but that's how we can see this formula take place. So what's really important to remember <clears throat> is the principles of my no load speed. So no load speed means no mechanical load. So that rotor right now is just freewheeling. This is always going to be really close to my synchronous speed. Okay, which we'll talk about later what exactly synchronous speed is. But this is going to be really close, and how to calculate it. This is going to be really close to my synchronous speed. My full load speed, this is a nameplate value. So that's a nameplate piece of information. When I have applied full mechanical load. So full mechanical load to my motor, what happens? So a fundamental of three-phase induction motors is that the difference between mechanical load, no mechanical load, and full mechanical load. We need to know which one will always be faster. If that motor is not doing any work, all it's doing is spinning the mass of the rotor, that's when it is no load. I have nothing hooked up. I got no conveyor belt. I'm not moving any water. I'm not moving any gravel. Um, however you want to envision this. I'm not moving any air. My fan is not blowing air. There's nothing mechanical. The op motor's still operating, but it's not moving my end product. At full load, it's operating at its designed value. So no load will always be faster than full load. And it's really important to remember this because when I set this up, it's easy to get these two backwards. We don't want to do that. Um, so let's just say I have a motor that the speed at no load is 17.95 RPM. There's nothing connected to it. That is a no load speed. So I have 17.95 as my no load speed. And then I take um, we are going to connect this to a conveyor belt and on my conveyor belt I'm going to be moving some boxes. What's going to happen? You added mechanical load, I need you to think the motor is going to slow down because it's now performing work and that's going to cause a decrease in speed. So my full load, so we did our calculations, we're going to move this to full mechanical load and it operates at 1740. So as you look at this, you're like, okay. 
my no load speed is higher than my full load speed. That's perfect. Minus one, and then we'll times this by 100 at the end. It's really important that you remember the no load speed is higher than the full load speed. So what you end up with, um, if you do this in the brackets, I'll do this calculation first. It's 1.0316 minus one times 100. So I get uh, 0 0.0316 once I subtract the 1 times 100. And now this is expressed as a percentage. I'll move this over here so we can see. And that will be 3.16%. Okay? So fundamental of this the, the main fundamental of this is understanding and being able to envision that motor and uh, what the no load speed, what does no load represent, and what does the full load represent. It is, it's, can be not that intuitive, but if we think about the process, what happens if I add more boxes, the motor slows down as I add load. Think of your process, think of your analogy, whatever is going through your head to help you with that understanding, because this is the fundamental of understanding what is happening with that mo motor. I hope this has helped um, and we'll move forward. We'll talk about sync speed, we'll talk about slip speed and what other speeds are represented in my motor. So we'll see you in the next one.